Oh, six Premier League wins in a row. Let's go. What is happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is a match review of Chelsea's 2-0 win against Crystal Palace in the Premier League at home at Stamford Bridge. Six wins in a row. Frank Lampard's blues are flying high and superb scenes indeed. We've got a lot to unpack in today's match review, but before we get into it, I wanted to let you guys know that this video is brought to you by Football Index. Obsessed with the beautiful game like I am, and do you want to sort of make something out of your football knowledge? Then why don't you check out Football Index? It is a stock market for buying and selling footballer shares. Buy footballers that you think are going to to perform and if they do perform then their price will increase and you profit. They can even win payouts if they score, assist or do well in the media. Pretty sweet eh? Download the Football Index app today or check out the link in description. Remember it's 18 or over to use Football Index. Oh yeah and subscribe to Football Therapy if you're new and hit the bell notifications icon. Sweet let's get into the match. Chelsea obviously coming off the back of that 4-4 draw with Ajax at home in the Champions League and like I said in the preview this was going to be a very very different test to that game and you know what it was it was wibbly wobbly Roy Hodgson's 4-5-1 formation sitting everyone behind the ball trying to do something on the counter and maybe try and get some joy out of set pieces which made for a most frustrated figure in Wilfred Zaha all game right let's pull up the analysis screen and talk about the game a little bit as you can see next to me, as per usual, I've pulled up the who scored match centre graphic to give you guys some context of how the game went statistically. Like previously said in the video, Roy Hodgson was a very took a very defensive approach in this game, pragmatic and was looking to hit Chelsea on the counter. Frank Lampard, in the absence of Jorginho, played his normal 4-2-3-1, but N'Golo Kante came in in the engine room. Emerson returned to the side at left back and a really exciting addition is Rhys James making his first Premier League start for Chelsea. Chelsea had the successful centre-back partnership of Zuma and Tomori continuing in that position. Tammy Abraham started up front and the three in behind consisted of Mason Mount in the number 10 who we thought maybe he might not start due to his niggling injury. Willian on the right and Captain America Christian Pulisic on the left. Right Chelsea came out of the blocks in this game and they jumped on Crystal Palace and looked very very good in the early early opening stages and indeed generally most of the early stages in this first half. Superb fast combinations, great 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 attacking phases of play but maybe not quite as fast as coach Frank Lampard would have liked. Chelsea got I think four free kicks in this first half three of which were actually shooting chances on goal, but none of the three managed to test the goalkeeper. And really, the first half consisted with Chelsea doing really exciting spells of pressure and Crystal Palace soaking it up and actually conceding loads of fouls. Saying that though, out of the four yellow cards there were on the first half, three of them were for Chelsea and the only one for Palace was Zaha. So they were giving away sort of little niggles throughout and Chelsea were getting loads of free kicks. Towards the end of the first half, Chelsea did begin to fade a little bit in terms of intensity and I think that probably frustrated Lampard um, because of that early sustained pressure. Chelsea really should have capitalised off that earlier in the game but it looked like for Palace they had weathered the storm in that first half and they went through and they might be okay in the second half and try and nick something. It wasn't long into the second half where Chelsea got the breakthrough via top scorer Tammy Abraham. In the 52nd minute Willian did this lovely little sort of side flick one touch assist to put Tammy through in a great offensive combination and Tammy opens his body up puts it in the corner and scores and breaks the deadlock at Stamford Bridge. This puts young Young Tammy Abraham on 10 Premier League goals this season and a little bit of information and trivia for you here he's now matched Marcus Rashford's best ever Premier League season tally at 10 goals and we are just in the beginning of November not a dig at Rashford he's playing in a less creative team just a point of reference Chelsea don't try and settle the game down after the goal indeed they actually go for it a bit more and they look more comfortable and now now they're starting to move the ball a lot, lot quicker like coach Frank Lampard would have wanted. Palace are getting more and more frustrated. And although a couple of their players are playing well, ex-Chelsea player Gary Cahill, who was well received by the Chelsea fans, he's playing pretty good. He's playing like a sort of old school centre half. Palace are actually keeping a really low block, low defensive line, which suits Gary Cahill 
well, you know, they're not going to play a high line, especially against runners like Pulisic, Mount and Abraham. So they're playing deep. But generally, the outfield players, people like Wilfred Zaha, they're getting really frustrated now and conceding loads of free kicks. In the 79th minute, Captain America makes it two and doubles the score line for Chelsea. It's Michy Batshuayi that receives the ball really well on the turn and takes a shot on goal, but it gets deflected out. And <laughs> Captain America runs in and heads it home for 2-0. Not intentionally, but it's that combination again, the Dortmund boys, Pulisic and Batshuayi linking up unintentionally for a goal. I love how Pulisic's getting these kind of goals now. This is his fifth Premier League goal of the season, which I think maybe matches his best ever league scoring return. But he's getting these kind of goals now, the follow-up, the late run-ins into the box from a midfield. I mean, basically, what I'm trying to say is he's being coached by Frank Lampard and he's doing the follow-up balls, he's doing the late runs, he's trying to get onto scrap balls and score goals and he is god bless him so captain america makes it too so the substitutes for chelsea in this game as i've already talked about michi batshuayi callum hudson adori came on did an excellent run actually but didn't get a chance too much to demonstrate his ability and billy gilmore who was well received by stanford bridge and got a few cheers chelsea see out the 2-0 win probably should have had a few more goals in that and they comfortably get their sixth premier league win in a row with a clean sheet to compliment let's get rid of the analysis screen and talk about some player performances is. Kepa was okay in this match. He made one half decent save. He only really needed to make one half decent save. He did make one risky ball out to Zuma, which was a little bit worrying, but he's okay, Kepa. He's doing all right. He probably does need to improve. Emerson was good. A welcome return there at left back after Alonso's poor, poor performance against Ajax. Some good combinations, and he had a decent shot on goal as well. Both centre backs were decent. They're looking like they're creating a really good partnership now, and I'm not sure Rudiger's going to be able to get back into this side with how these two are playing together. And Reese James, man, he needs to be talked about. I hate to use this terminology, but he had Zaha on toast. Yum, yum. His pace and industry basically was all over Wilfred Zaha, and he was excellent going forward. I think everyone has recognised what a player Reese James is now. A lot of Chelsea fans already knew about it, but certainly Premier League fans are now seeing it. He was excellent in this game. Kovacic was really, really good. You could tell the midfield was missing Jorginho. Generally, that was evident in this game, but Kovacic was very good. Kante was good. He brings something different to the midfield, and you can see he's a bit rusty, and the team are a bit rusty playing with Kante, because it is different to having Jorginho and Cover. Cover and Kante, or Jorginho and Kante, is a different type of chemistry and a different question that they pose to the opposition, I guess. So he was good, but it needs time to bet in. Pulisic was excellent. Not only did he get the goal, he was just superb all game, in my opinion. A couple of poor shots or poor passes, but you're totally forgivable in this team. Very, very impressive by the American. Mount was good. He looks brighter than he had been looking recently. Uh, very pokey. Popped up a couple of shots. He was combining well with Willian and Pulisic, actually. And indeed, Tammy, all the forwards, he was very good at um, interplaying with. So, pretty good for Mason Mount. Tammy got his goal. It wasn't his best game, right? It wasn't his best game, but it was a good goal, and that's all you need from your centre forward. He did a couple of good things, but he found it very hard to get into the game in the first half. And Willian. Willian was excellent for me, man. Not only did he get that lovely little assist, he's running in the 90th minute. You think, is this, I thought this dude's supposed to be in his 30s and he's just killing it, man. So I understand why Lampard bloody loves him and I think Lampard will be gagging to give Willian a new contract. So excellent all round. The subs all did pretty well when they came on. Gilmore got a few good touches in the midfield. Like I said, hudson Adoy made a good run. Batshuayi did a couple of good... Um, takes and turns as we know he's really good at um, but didn't really I mean, if he scored a goal that would have been excellent but for a cameo it was a good performance anyway what do you think get down in the comments below and let me know your thoughts and opinions on the match I'll be down there reading them remember to like the video if you've enjoyed the content and subscribe to football therapy if you're new to the channel hit the bell notifications icon and you know what follow me on social media Twitter Instagram at football Yannick guys it's been an excellent game hopefully you've enjoyed the review Enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.